I gotta say for all the crap that I and pretty much everybody on the planet gives to electronic arts, they are actually killing it right now when it comes to Origin Premiere on PC. I bought this service when the Anthem launch was coming. And at the time, nobody knew what Anthem would become. A lot of us bought this because it was only an additional $20 annually over the price of the Legion of Dawn Digital Collector Edition. And many of us bought it, played Anthem, hated it, and a lot of my friends aren't really using it. I think I'm one of the few people who still actively searches on Origin Premiere. And I went online a couple days ago to see what new games had been added, and they are continuing to absolutely nail it. And I know I did a video on this before talking about Origin Premiere and how great of a service it was, but I'm going to do another one because there's even more great games that have been announced. So the cool thing about Origin Premiere that I have found so far, at least, is most of the games do not leave. They just keep adding to it. As where Game Pass has a running library of games that come and go, for the most part, at least to me, from the games I currently am playing or games that I am interested in, Origin Premiere just keeps throwing more on the pile. Very rarely do I see games actually leaving the service. That's not to say there aren't ones that leave the service, but all the high power, big hitting games have been there and continue to be there. So let's take a look through some of the Origin Premiere games that have been added, like A, Ta a Plague Tale Innocence, which came out three months ago. You'll notice uh, in the upper right hand corner of a lot of these preview boxes, the word new comes out. That's obviously to indicate games that have launched recently on the service. You can filter by those. Right now I have it filtered alphabetically A to Z. You can open these from the Origin Premiere Launcher, but I find the web page opens up significantly faster. So that's how we're actually viewing this content is via the web page. I did a video review on A Way Out, and that was a game that I loved. I thought it was really, really good. You'll notice there's a lot of other games in here that make the rounds when it comes to giving away for free. You'll see a lot of these games have been carried over to Game Pass for the Xbox, Game Pass for the PC, PlayStation Plus, or they're deeply discounted on a lot of the Humble Bundle sites or Green Man Gaming or other services like that. So I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but I wanted to just kind of scroll through the list to show you guys some of the amazing standouts that have been making their way to this phenomenal, phenomenal service. Um, you saw the Battlefield games there. Pretty much anything that EA makes is something that you're going to get almost instantly, which is really, really nice. If it's not day and date, it's pretty darn close. And it includes all of the DLC, as I just kind of blew through it. But you'll see all the premium, all the expansion packs, everything like that. So if, you are, if it is an EA game, you are getting, without a doubt, the definitive version of it. Um, they have all the Dead Space games, which I'm still limping my way through. I am kind of stuck at the end of Dead Space 2. I need to go back and just knock that out. Dragon Age Inquisition, which was a phenomenal game. I, I thoroughly enjoyed playing that on the PlayStation. Frostpunk is another great strategy game that I bought and it's already on Premiere. I'm like, man, had I known this game wasn't going to be on Premiere, uh, I would have just waited. It is a phenomenal city building game that is Dark Souls-esque in its difficulty. You have to basically build up a city while fighting the never-ending cold keeping your generators up and your food supplies up. It's a really, really fun strategy game that I've had a lot of fun with. I'm not very good at, but I've had a lot of fun with it. All the, not all of the Lego games, but a pretty good chunk of the Lego Batman games. Some of the Star Wars games have been included. All the Mass Effects, which um, kind of makes sense. I mean, that's kind of one of their tenpole franchises. Lots of Need for Speed DLC. I did a review on Need for Speed Payback on my channel a couple months ago. Thoroughly enjoyed that game. It was very, very interesting. Uh, I like the racing mechanics a lot. All the Plants vs. Zombies games, which never really got a lot of love, but I liked. Um, very smooth. 60 frames a second on the console. I'm sure it would be a zillion frames a second on my 2080 Ti, but 
fun little strategy shooter game that had a pretty decent amount of character customization and uh, level design, which gave to some pretty good replayability, I thought. I, I do enjoy those games. You got SimCity in here. You got all the Star Wars Battlefront and Battlefront 2 with all of the DLC. A lot of older Star Wars games like The Force Unleashed or Starfighter, X-Wing Alliance. So we're going deep in the catalog. The Flame and the Flood was a game that I played on Game Pass. I really like this. This is a survival type game. Basically working your way down a river trying to stay alive. The Surge, The Witness, Titanfall, both Titanfalls actually, Titanfall 1 and 2, Torchlight, uh, which is a really fun Diablo clone, really enjoyed playing that. You have Unraveled, Virginia, which is in my catalog, but I haven't yet gotten to, and the Wing Commander game. So just a quick look through it, if I hit on um, new to access, you can see some of the newer ones that came out. I know I highlighted a lot of these as I kind of went through, but these are newer games for the most part that have made their way over to the uh, um, the, the service, the newest one being Frostpunk, but they are definitely keeping up with a lot of the other streaming services. So if you are a PC gamer, I cannot encourage you enough to really consider checking this service out. The fact that they're dropping these games so fast and the fact that they're keeping up with Game Pass, which is a service that I absolutely love, is amazing. This is for PC, though. The um, vault that you can get on the Xbox or on the PlayStation 4 significantly reduced library of games. But I think that you have this service, and I think you have Game Pass, and I would argue you probably don't need to buy many games anymore just because of the sheer volume of games and really good games like A Plague Tale, which I'm still blown away by. That's really the inspiration behind me doing this video. So anyways, we can't beat up EA too bad because they're actually doing something right. With that, I'm going to close out this video. I hope you found it informative. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.